Islam is not merely a religion. It is also, and perhaps for most, a state ideology. It is all-pervasive, missionary, permeates every aspect of social cooperation and culture. Islam is an organizing principle, a narrative, a philosophy, a value system, and a vademecum. In this, Islam resembles Confucianism, and to some extent, Hinduism. Judaism, and its offspring Christianity, though heavily involved in political affairs throughout the ages, have kept their dignified distance from such carnal matters. These are religions of heaven, as opposed to Islam, practical, pragmatic, hands-on, ubiquitous, earthly creed. Secular religions, democratic liberalism, communism, fascism, Nazism, socialism, and other isms. These are more akin to Islam than to, let's say, Buddhism. They are universal, prescriptive, and total. These secular religions provide recipes, rules, and norms regarding every aspect of existence – individual, social, cultural, moral, economic, political, military, and philosophical. At the end of the Cold War, democratic liberalism stood triumphant over the fresh graves of its ideological opponents. They've all been eradicated. This precipitated Fukuyama's premature diagnosis about the end of history. But one state ideology, one bitter rival, one implacable opponent, one contestant for world domination, one antithesis, remains standing, and that was Islam. Militant Islam is therefore not a cancerous mutation of true Islam. On the very contrary, militant Islam is the purest expression of Islam's nature as an imperialistic religion which demands unmitigated obedience from its followers and regards all infidels as both inferior and avowed enemies. The same can be said about democratic liberalism, though. Exactly like Islam, it does not hesitate to exercise force. It is missionary, colonizing, and regards itself as a monopolist of the truth and of universal values. Its antagonists are invariably portrayed as depraved, primitive, and below par, and sometimes as mortal enemies.